Hi, and welcome back to our summer school virtually. My name is Mrs. Smithy, and I teach second grade at Stockwell Elementary. And today is day two, and so up here I have the materials that you're going to need for our lesson today so that you can do it along with me. You should have a paper that says day two on it, and there's some stars up at the top. We're going to get to that a little bit later, but you'll also need a pencil. Our code word for this lesson is mountain, so there's also a spot on, that, on your paper for that if you want to write that down. Now our refuel for today is a mindful breathing activity, and we are going to practice mountain breaths. So if you want to just flip your paper over to the blank side, you can draw some mountains on your paper, probably about five. Um, and then we are going to practice using those mountains to help us breathe. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to draw some mountains, and I'm actually going to draw some while you're drawing yours. Add as much detail as you want. Drawing is another thing that kind of helps me relax. So we get to mix a little bit of art with our mindfulness today. All right, you can add as much detail as you want, but I think we're going to stop for there, for now. Now, when we do mountain breaths, you're going to trace your mountain with your finger up. And when you trace up, that means you're going to inhale. You're going to take a deep breath in through your nose. And when you're going down the other side of the mountain, you're going to exhale. You're going to breathe out through your mouth. So I'm going to show you what that looks like first, and then I'm going to have you do that with me, okay? So you're going to go up and breathe in. You're going to hold it for a second at the top, and then you're going to slowly let it out as you go down. And then you're going to inhale on your way up. Exhale, breathe out on the way down. Inhale, breathe in as you go up the mountain. Exhale. Breathe out as you go down, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. All right, so this time I want you to, to practice with me. You can trace your own mountains and breathe in on your way up and then let it out on your way down. All right, so in, out. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. I can already feel myself getting calm and ready for our lesson today. We're going to do that one more time. This time I'm going to start on this side and go this way. Breathe in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. You should be ready to learn. That's a strategy you can use anywhere, especially if you have a blank piece of paper. All right, if you remember last time we were talking about arrays 
and we're going to continue with the rays today. And our target is, I can use addition to find the total number of objects in an array. I can write a repeated addition sentence. So in order to do that, you're going to skip count to find the total, and you're going to write an equation to represent an array. And we're actually going to be writing two equations today. So if we want to think back to our array from the other day, an array is an arrangement of objects into rows and columns. And remember, each row has an equal amount, and each column has an equal amount. So to review and just kind of jog your memory a little bit, we're going to play a quick game of which one does not belong. Now, when you play which one does not belong, you're going to look at the choices, and you're going to think, hmm, if I had to kick one of those out, which one would I throw out? And why? The important part is, your, part is your evidence. It's your reason why you think it doesn't belong. Now, I'm not saying there's one right or wrong answer here, but I want you to pick which one you think doesn't belong and why. And then if you still have time, maybe think about, hmm, if I found another one that wouldn't work, why do I think that one doesn't belong with the others? Okay, so I'm going to give you a few moments to look at each array and make up your mind. Which one do you think does not belong with the others? If you said this one, raise your hand. Do you think this one doesn't belong? It's kind of tall and skinny. Hmm. Raise your hand if you said this one. Did you think this one didn't belong maybe because it's red and the other ones are black? Raise your hand if you thought this one didn't belong because it's little squares together and these are look like objects or they're kind of separated. What about this one? Could this one not belong? Now I don't know if you remember how to skip count to find the total like we did last time, but this one has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And this one, if I counted by threes, is 24. And this one, columns of 4, equals 24. But What's the total of this one? 3, 6, 9, 12. So maybe this one doesn't belong because the totals don't match. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just fun to work with the rays and compare them with each other and see which one we think would not belong and what our evidence is. All right, so today we are going to work on representing an array with an equation with a repeated addition sentence. That means the, the same number is repeated every time. So in order to find the equation, you're going to find the equal groups, you're going to add each equal group until you get the total, and then you're going to write each equal group you used to show the total. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like. There are two repeated addition sentences that match this array. If we look at the columns, you can see there's one, two, three, four, there's five equal groups of three. So we're going to add each group and that is how we're going to write our equation. So we have a group of three plus another group of three plus another group of three plus another group of three, plus another group of three. And we need to write the total. If you know how to skip count by threes, it may be quick for you to add those three, six, nine, 12, 15. If you get stuck counting by threes, you are mathematicians, you can always calculate the answer by adding. 
So I know 3 plus 3 is 6. Count on 3 more. 7, 8, 9. Count on 3 more. 10, 11, 12. Count on 3 more. 13, 14, 15. So we have 15 objects total. Another way that we can find a repeated addition sentence is by looking at the rows. So we have an equal group here, an equal group here, and an equal group here. And we're going to add each of those equal groups. So I'm going to start with this first row of five. So I'm going to add five plus, there's my second group of five, plus five. And it should equal the same total. If I get different totals, that should tell you, hmm, I may have made a mistake somewhere. I know counting by fives because I also count by fives when I tell time. Five, 10, 15. So this array has two equations. Three plus three plus three plus three plus three equals 15. Five plus five plus five equals 15. I want you to think about this array. Which equation or equations, that's what that means, represent the array? A, B, C, or D. So that means there could be more than one. Which one of those could represent this array? Hmm. 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4, is that a repeated addition sentence? No, so I should just know that that's probably not going to represent this array because we add the same equal groups. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 equals 12. Do you see that in this array? 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 equals 12. So B would represent this array. What about 4 plus 4 plus 4? 4 plus 4 plus 4 equals 12. So yes, that would equal, that would represent the array. Hmm, what about 6 plus 6 equals 12? I've seen a lot of students write this equation to represent the array because I do see a group of 6, and I do see a group of 6, and the total is 12. And 6 and 6 are the same number, but that equation doesn't work because we only can add the equal rows and then the equal columns individually. So it would need to be 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. You can add the groups of 6 as a strategy to count them, but when we're talking about equations that represent an array, it needs to be adding every column and then adding every row. So 6 plus 6 equals 12 does not equal this array. All right, we have another LearnZillion video that we're going to watch today. And the question that I want you to be thinking about as you are watching the video is, why can one array be represented by two different equations? Okay, I want you to think about that. How are these repeated addition sentences related to this array? In this lesson, you will learn how to write two different repeated addition sentences by using the same array. Let's review what an array is. An array is an arrangement of objects into rows and columns. What direction do the rows go in? Across. These are the rows, and each row has the same number of objects. In this array, there are three tiles in each row. What direction do columns go in? Up and down. These are the columns, and each column has the same number of objects. For this array, there are four tiles in each column. 
A common misunderstanding is knowing the difference between the rows and columns. Many students get confused about which is which. Here is a diagram to help you remember the direction for each one. Rows go across, as if you were sitting in a row of seats watching a football game. The columns go up and down, just like the goal posts. So remember, we sit in rows to watch the football players make a field goal through the columns. How many rows do you see in this array? That's right, three. One, two, three. And how many circles are in each row? Five. Circles are in each row. We can write an addition sentence using the rows. If there are three rows with five circles in each row, then we will need to add five plus five plus five to find the total number of objects we can skip count. Five plus five is ten and 10 plus 5 is 15. Here is the same array, but let's look at the columns. How many columns do you see? That's right, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And how many circles are in each column? Three circles are in each column. We can write an addition sentence using the columns. If there are five columns with three circles in each column, then we will need to add 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. To find the total number of objects, we can skip count. 3 plus 3 is 6, and 6 plus 3 is 9, and 9 plus 3 is 12, and 12 plus 3 is 15. Let's look at these number sentences. We wrote two different sentences from the same array. This number sentence was counting how many circles were in each row. And this number sentence was counting how many circles were in each column. Both are correct and both get 15 as the total number of circles. This was the original array that we started with. And these are the two repeated addition sentences that were written showing how many circles were in each row and in each column. If we rotate this array, the amount of circles in each row and column change, and so will the addition sentences. But did the amount of circles change? No, there are still 15 circles in both arrays. In this lesson, you have learned how to write two repeated addition sentences by using the same array. All right, so for this next part, you're going to need the worksheet for day two. And we are going to do this together. So these questions are going to be about the array over here to the right. We have some blue stars that are arranged in an array. And we need to write down how many rows are in that array and how many columns are in that array. So we want to make sure that we know which ones are the rows and which ones are the columns. So go ahead and count. How many rows do you count in this array? And write down your answer. Rows go across, so one, two, three rows. How many columns? Columns go up and down, one, two, three, four. So we have four columns. Now we've learned how to write two repeated addition sentences that represent this array. And they've given us some blanks, so we're going to have to pay attention to make sure which one goes in which. We have blank plus blank plus blank plus blank equals blank. So which one would we need to add four times? Which repeated addition sentence do you think would go in there? Would we be counting the rows or counting the columns? Well, if we need to count four times, we would need to count the columns because there's four columns. So we would have three plus three plus three plus three. Hmm, what would our total be? 
Do you know how to skip count by threes? Three, six, nine, twelve. That's one repeated addition sentence. It's one equation. What would the other equation be? Go ahead and write that down in those blanks. Well, if we counted the columns last time, we're going to count the rows this time. And we have four in each row. So you should have four plus four plus four. I know four plus four is a double, and that equals eight. And then four more would be 12. Now we need to add one more row. So I'm going to add a row to our array. Now, if you're really good at drawing stars, you can draw stars, or if you just want to make a little circle underneath, that's fine. But I think you should try to make a star. So I'm going to add one row underneath. One, two, three, four. How many stars are there now? Well, if we started with 12, we added another row of four. That means we have 16. So now if we want to write an equation to represent the new array, what would that equation be? Go ahead and see if you can't write that down, figure it out. What would the equation be that would match our new array? Did you notice something special about this array? If you tried to write two different sentences, did you come up with the same thing? If I count my columns, 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, or I count my rows, 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, that's the same number sentence. So if you have an array that has the same number in each row as the same number in each column, four rows and four columns, then you're going to only have one number sentence for this array. So what would that number sentence be? Did you get four plus four plus four plus four equals 16? If you didn't know how to count by fours, I see two doubles in here. I see four plus four equals eight, and four plus four equals eight, and I know eight plus eight is a double, and that equals 16. So just because we're skip counting and we're writing our repeated addition sentence does not mean that you cannot use other strategies to add those, those numbers together. So now we're going to add one more column. So we added a row. Now we're going to add a column. So I'm going to draw this right over here on the side. One, two, three, four. Notice I kept my rows straight and my columns straight. You want to keep them organized in that array. Now how many stars are there? We had 16. We added four more. That gets us to 20. Now, I want you to write an equation to represent our new array of 20 stars on the line. If you want to write both, you can. What equation represents our new array of 20 stars? Are you ready to check? All right, if we write our rows, our repeated addition sentence using our rows, this would be a row of five plus a row of five 
plus a row of five, plus a row of five, equals, ooh, counting by fives, five, 10, 15, 20. Well, we got our correct total. Or you could have added your columns, could have added those equal groups together. So we have four plus an equal group of four plus four plus four plus four, that column we added, which should equal the same 20. All right. You have been able to write two repeated addition sentences that represent an array today, and you have done a fantastic job. If you wanted to continue um, working with arrays at home, you could get creative and draw your own arrays and represent it with an equation. Some ideas could be to use shaving cream or sidewalk chalk. So with shaving cream, you can squirt some out on a surface or on a baking sheet, spread it out flat. You may have written your spelling words in shaving cream before or done some other fun activities like that, but you could draw an array using hearts or stars or circles or squares and then write a repeated addition sentence that matches it. Or if it's a nice day outside, you could use some sidewalk chalk and show everyone what you know about arrays. All right. I hope you have a great day today and I will see you next time.